Hello, and welcome to Oathbreaking News, your Oathbreaker news source, brought to you by the Signature Spell Bomb. In this episode, we will be covering the Core 2021 and Jumpstart spoiler season so far, the June 8th suspension of Wynota Joiner Forces in Historic, the additional banning of racial se- racially sensitive cards in the game, and at the end of the video, we will be talking again about the Love Your LGS promotion. Just a quick reminder, if you like what we do here, then you can help us out by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. In a June 2nd article entitled, Where to Find M20 in Jumpstart Previews, link in the description, WotC outlined the full spoiler season for both new product lines starting June 4th and continuing through June 20th. All the spoilers were kicked off by WotC when they hosted a Twitch stream on June 4th. If you want to see where every card is going to be spoiled and by which creators, please check out that article. Now, let's cover a couple of the recently spoiled cards that are likely to affect the format. I will save the Planeswalker deck cards for another video as we are planning a longer format video on the Planeswalker decks. Thursday, June 4th, WotC revealed the following cards. Double Vision, which costs 3 and 2 red. It's an enchantment that reads, whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell each turn, copy that spell and you may choose new targets for the copies. This card will be a boon to any spell slinger deck, and I'm excited to see what people do with it. I'm certain I'll see it at least in a Ral Zarek deck or two. Margara the Diplomat, for 3 and a white, is a 2-4 legendary creature human cleric with lifelink whenever an opponent attacks with a creature. If two or more of those creatures are attacking you and or a planeswalker you control, you draw a card, and whenever an opponent casts their second spell each turn, you draw a card. These are great effects for white since we don't get a lot of draw. I'm sure commander players will love this and I'm sure it will find a home in our format. I do opine that this is a mythic so I probably won't get to see as many of them as I really want across the table from me. Moving on, on June 5th they spoiled the following cards. Bad deal costs 4 and 2 black. It says you draw 2 cards and each opponent discards 2 cards and each player loses 2 life. That is a life swing of 6 points, which is pretty good. And that is a total swing and card advantage of 8 cards. You go up 2 and all your opponents go down 2 in a 4 player game. That's pretty good. I have seen a lot of people comment how they don't like the what they feel is a high cost for this card. Shipwreck Dowser costs 3 and 2 blue. It's a 3-3 with prowess. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, you return an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. It is interesting to see a creature with prowess able to actually fetch an instant or sorcery from your graveyard. It seems like it self-pumps that way. Plus, there are plenty of decks that will find a way to combo with this. <clears throat> I imagine we will see it in white-blue decks very soon. Land War Visionary for 2 and a green is a 2-2 Elf Druid. When it enters the battlefield, you draw a card, and it can be tapped for 1 green mana. It is essentially just Land War Elf and Elvish Visionary stapled together. I haven't decided if ramping on turn 3 with this little guy is good or bad. I think I'd rather just play a Land Fetch spell. We have Primal Might for X and a green. It reads, target creature you control gets plus X plus X till end of turn, and then fights up to one target creature you don't control. Paying only one green mana for a fight mechanic is already pretty on brand for green, but also getting a pump spell for X is pretty good. I do imagine I will see this in at least one of my regular playgroup's command zones, because it's removal in most decks, and it's playable at any cost, including only one green. Havoc Gesture for 4 and a red is a 5-5 five, five Devil. Whenever you sacrifice a permanent, it can deal 1 damage to any target. And I'll start to finally see some red-black aristocrat decks in my playgroup. Pack Leader for 1 and a white is a 2-2 two, two creature dog. Other dogs we control get plus 1, plus 1. Whenever it attacks, we prevent all combat damage to be dealt to dogs we control. This is going to be a strong theme. As, as it seems, there's a strong theme in this set. For cats and dogs. Gadrak the Crown Scourge for two and a red is a legendary creature dragon with flying. He's a 5-4. Gadrak the Crown Scourge can attack unless you control four more artifacts. At the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each non-token creature that died this turn. Gadrak's interesting, while as we couldn't run something like this as a commander in our format, 
It is nice that he is essentially mana ramp that pays us for removing opponent's creatures. At four, it does not say on his card whose non-token creatures died on a turn. Now, it does hurt us a little bit because it's only going to care about non-token creatures that die on our turn, so it will force us to pay some of our removal at sorcery speed. Chromatic Ori at a cost of seven is a legendary artifact that allows us to spend mana as though it were mana of any color. It can tap and produce five generic mana. We can pay five and tap it and draw a card for each color among permanents we control. In Oathbreaker, this card is okay. Getting to seven mana does happen, but it doesn't happen near as often as you will see in an EDH game. Since in a 60 card format with 20 life, the games just aren't quite as long. And we will never be able to use that second ability to draw more than three cards as we do not currently have a Planeswalker in the format that is of more than three colored mana. So our commander choices limit this card's effectiveness. Indulging Patrician costs one, a white and a black, is a vampire noble with flying and lifelink. It's a 1-4. At the beginning of our end step, if we've gained three or more life in a turn, each opponent loses three life. I have seen a prevalence of white-black life gain decks that use vampires on arena, so I imagine this will become a staple in those decks. I am a little terrified. For one in a black, we're beginning a black instant called Eliminate. It says destroy target creature or planeswalker with converted mana cost three or less. This will hurt some of the faster planeswalkers in our format, but since it is limited just to black, it will limit its use, I think, overall. It is being printed at uncommon, so I do see it becoming a common card to our format, but maybe not a staple. Azusa, Lost But Seeking, costs two and a green. She's a one, two legendary creature human monk. She is a reprint in this set. We may pay two additional lands on each of our turns, which is excellent. I can't think of any deck that doesn't want to ramp that way. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, also a reprint, is an eight generic mana cost legendary planeswalker Ugin. Comes to play seven loyalty. We can plus two him to deal three damage to any target. We can minus X him and exile each permanent with converted mana cost X or less. That is one or more colors. Or we can minus 10 him and we gain seven life, draw seven cards, and then put up to seven permanent cards from our hands onto the battlefield. Ugin is an expensive planeswalker, so it takes very specific decks to run him as an Oathbreaker, but he can be great. Since his deck will be colorless, his minus X ability can be a very oppressive board wipe that comes down and is effective the minute you play him. So if you're going to play a Ugin deck with him as a board wipe, keep in mind that that can be very oppressive. Grim Tutor costs one and two black. You can search your library for a card and put that card in your hand and then shuffle your library. You lose three life. This is a very efficiently cost tutor. Um, a lot of people have been waiting for it to be reprinted for a long time. It's going to be good in any format people want it for, so it probably will end up with a high price tag because a good tutor is amazing. Corian Dryad for one in a green is a reprint as well. Whenever you cast a spell that's either white, blue, black, or red, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on it and it starts as a 1-1 creature. I do think Quarion Dryad will see play in certain three color green decks. Ruined Halo for two white is an enchantment that reads, as it enters the battlefield, you choose a card name, you have protection from the chosen card name. I know my play group well enough that they're going to name something like Chandra often enough to prevent uh, a Chandra Super Friends deck in our planes group from winning, but it can be used on any Planeswalker ability that does damage. It can be used on so many cards, so I would say if you plan on playing Rune Halo in your deck as kind of a protection card for your face, that you pay attention to what card is in your opponent's command zone. You need to know their Oathbreaker, and you need to know their signature spell because it could be important. We have a reprint of Termoid's Crypt, cost zero. We can tap and sacrifice it and exile all cards from target player's graveyard. This is really good if you've got a lot of graveyard strategy decks in your meta. This card's pretty good in most formats, so I don't hurt at all to see it reprinted. Fierce Empath for Tuna Green is an elf. He's a 1-1. When he enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost 6 or greater, reveal it, and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. In many EDH decks, Fierce Empath is a tutor that will get you some pretty powerful creatures. 
I do know there are some combos that kick off with getting a six cost creature I won't mention. And Fierce Empath is very good at stabilizing decks that want something like that. Containment Priest, cost one in white, is a human cleric. It's a 2-2 with flash. If a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, you get to exile it instead. This card has a disproportionate effect on certain strategies. It's going to be a little bit unkind in EDH as a format. In our format, it's uh, quite a bit weaker, but if you play from the top of your deck or you play creatures in strange ways, or this is a good hate bear type of piece. Next we're getting on to a card I've seen talked about a lot on the reddits and memed a lot on the reddits and it's Rin in Seri the Inseparable. For one, a red, a green, and a white we get a legendary cat dog. Whenever we cast a dog spell we create a 1-1 cat creature token. Whenever we cast a cat spell we get a 1-1 dog. If we play red, green, and white and tap it it's going to deal damage equal to the number of dogs we control to any target and we will gain life equal to the number Number of cats we control. Teferi's Ageless Insight for 2 and 2 blue is a legendary enchantment. If you would draw a card except your first one you draw in each of your draw steps, instead you draw two cards. So in the in decks that want it, specifically like a Jace, a Lab Maniac deck where you're trying to draw your deck out, this is amazing. In decks that don't need to draw their deck out to win, it is still amazing card advantage. I do feel like this card alone will lead to players running more enchantment hate in my meta. Next up we have Teferi's Tutelage for Tuna Blue. When it enters the battlefield we draw a card and discard a card. Whenever we draw a card we make target opponent mill two cards. Teferi's Protégé for two and a blue is a 2-3 human wizard. We can pay one and blue and tap it to draw a card and then discard a card. I find this card to be incredibly weak. I like its power and toughness, but there are so many creatures that will just rummage by tapping them. I'm sorry. That will just loot by tapping them, so this doesn't feel like it's that great of a card to me. Teferi, Master of Time, for two and two blue, is a legendary planeswalker Teferi with three loyalty. We may activate abilities of Teferi, Master of Time, on any player's turn. Anytime we can activate an instant, which kind of breaks the symmetry of the game. We can plus one him to draw a card, then discard a card. We can minus three him, and target creature we don't control phases out. And minus ten, take two extra turns after this one. I have a couple thoughts on Teferi. The fact is, is there's so many alternate versions of the art that you could put them together like a flipbook that there's going to be at least 45 versions of this Teferi in the set, which is a little much. Um, they brought back a classic ability, Phasing, but I believe this is the only card in the entire set that refers to Phasing, so it's a little weird to bring this back into Standard without any other support for that mechanic. It might seem like getting him to minus 10 as your Oathbreaker is hard, but in a round of Oathbreaker, when you can trigger his ability on every single player's turn, that's going to come fast. I don't think he's going to be as oppressive in Standard as previous to Fairies, but I do have some issues with this card. As something that surprised me personally, we are getting a new Liliana. Liliana Waker of the Dead costs two and two black. She's a legendary planeswalker, Liliana. She enters play with four loyalty. Her plus one is each player discards a card. Each opponent who can't loses three life, which is just a great ability. Almost every Liliana has always loved discard. Her minus three ability is target creature gets minus x minus x until end of turn, where x is the number of cards in your graveyard. Her minus 7 is you get an emblem. At the beginning of combat on your turn, put target creature card from your graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste. This is just an all-around good card for its mana, in my opinion. It doesn't really protect itself well out of the gate, but there's many a good black card that will protect a planeswalker, so that is fine. Like I said earlier, Liliana's traditionally love discard and her final ability I would probably use to pull creatures out of your graveyard back into play that have a come into play opponent's discard a card ability just to really make sure you're causing that life loss as often as possible. As when set up properly, a nine life swing against all your opponents in a turn is pretty bananas. Peer into the abyss costs four and three black mana. Target player draws cards equal to half the number of cards in their library and then loses half their life rounded up each time. There are decks that this is going to be as good as a combo tutor in. This is printed at rare. Uh, decks where you want to switch life totals with your opponents, this isn't terrible. I mean, it 
could be good or bad. In a situation, you're doing half of somebody's life to them. In a lot of situations, you're essentially milling somebody half their library, but you're also giving them every answer that's in that half of their remaining deck. So it's just going to be very situational. It's kind of a risky card, depending on who you're playing it on and when. Bane Slayer Angel, cost 3 and 2 white. It's a creature angel. It's a 5-5. This is a wonderful reprint that has First Strike, Flying, Lifelink, and Protection from Demons and Dragons. In the previous commander set that was released, we saw a return of keyword soups matter creatures, and this is a creature that has a lot of keyword soup. Spark Hunter Masticore at 3 mana is a 3-4 Masticore. As an additional cost to cast it, we have to discard a card. It has protection from Planeswalkers. If we pay 1, it'll deal 1 damage to target Planeswalker. And if we pay 3, it will gain indestructible till end of turn. A 3-4 piece that can gain indestructible at instant speed that has protection from planeswalkers and can specifically target planeswalkers is going to hurt most Super Friends deck strategies and is going to be pretty powerful in the Oathbreaker format. I consider it close to being a, a must-run or a staple. I've seen a lot of people on Reddit argue, argue the opposite because of that discard a card. But with the prevalence of cards that will allow you to return something from your graveyard to your hand or from your graveyard to play, this really isn't a problem. If you're already planning to discard for any reason, that's not really that much of a cost. In a one-on-one -on -one game, discarding a card is a huge loss of advantage. In a four-player game, not everyone's looking at you all the time, so you can afford to lose one card most of the time. Now, M21 will be a set with draft boosters, collector's boosters, theme boosters, and planeswalker decks, and is stated to be released on July 3rd, barring anything that could hold back shipping. We know this has been problematic with COVID-19. Based on last year's core set and announcement by WotC, that core sets are going to be tied to specific planeswalkers moving forwards. We know that we can currently look forward to nine new Oathbreakers in the set that have been revealed so far. But we also know there will be at least 45 variants of the same Teferi card for whatever that matters. At this time, Jumpstart is a welcome new product to introduce new players to the game. The Jumpstart product is 20 card booster packs of cards pre-sorted into deck theme. There are a stated amount of 45 different deck themes. These themes vary greatly and are cards with the same creature type, vague themes like Doctor or based on particular Planeswalkers. To use the Jumpstart product, you will buy two 20-card packs of cards and shuffle them into a ready-to-play 40-card deck. This product appears to have a sorting method very similar to the one used in Keyforge to generate unique decks, and the shuffling of two piles of 20 cards together feels very similar to the game Smash Up, as we are creating a new deck by shuffling two together. This is interesting as Magic the Gathering, Keyforge, and Smash Up were all designed by the same game designer, Richard Garfield, so I wonder if that has anything to do with anything. Since very little is known about the Jumpstart product at this time, other than it will be closely related to the M21 core set, it is extremely difficult to know if this product is worth purchase or if it will have any effect on the Oathbreaker format. I myself will give the Jumpstart product a try as the fast play style and the removal of the deck building component is novel and it will make for an easy and quick game night. I do believe this will also help some players have an entry point into maybe some deck building and understanding. We will be covering more spoiler cards in future episodes. Now let's discuss the recent ban and restricted changes. On June 8th, Wizards of the Coast posted the following. Today we are making an update to the Magic the Gathering Arena digital format. We've discussed why we've made the following changes as well as the timing of this announcement. Why Nota Join Our Forces is suspended in MTG Arena effective June 8th, 2020 at 2 p.m. Since Ranked Historic returns in late May, we will be closely watching decks using Why Nota Join Our Forces. The early data for this deck shows it to be both popular and strong, but since the deck was so new to the format, we wanted to allow some time to see how the rest of the field adapted. And though the field has recently shifted due to last week's banning announcements, 
the data shows that there's not a significantly reduced performance to this deck. In fact, with the data now available, we see popularity roughly doubling since its emergence and the win rate remaining problematically high. Decks using Winote Joiner Forces currently represent too large a portion of the historic metagame, and the quality of enablers and payoffs in the format mean that it is unlikely to change without further action. Because of this, Winota Joiner Forces is suspended in historic. In a previous video about Winota, I did mention I felt like they were banning cards around it when they banned Agent of Treachery. I feel like it is a highly adaptive card. Taken out of Historic, it has been taken out of Brawl, and I think it's a matter of time before it disappears from Standard. In the article, Wizards went on to say, we are making the suspension effective immediately, which is a change from our previous announcement practice of providing one week's notice. As we have worked and learned more about how to manage Historic as a digitally focused format, we feel that this notice period, on balance, more problematic than beneficial here. The digital nature of Historic play allows us to observe the full format much more closely and allows players to respond to the format changes more quickly as well. For Historic only, there will be times that we feel the case is compelling enough that we should act immediately without providing a one-week notice. As with other formats, changes like this will not occur in any major event using the Historic format. This includes both organized play events such as the Mythic Invitational as well as MTG Arena-specific events geared towards high-level competitive play such as the Arena Open. The one-week notice period will remain the standard, no pun intended, for all formats other than historic, and we will continue to work closely with both our esports organization as well as our own events team to ensure the timing of these announcements. I feel like this part of the article is in effect responding to the allegations that they were giving inside information to their esports team. Without more information, I can't elaborate on that, as it would be irresponsible of me. However, there are articles in Reddit threads about that. If you are interested in doing your own research, this short notice shows that they are not prepared for changes that maybe need to be made for the format. Players sometimes want more than immediate notice. I do understand the need, but I don't know that I fully support this reasoning. Magic Arena players' collections will also be affected, as Winona Joiner of Forces is still playable in Standard and only being suspended in Historic. We will not be issuing any wild cards um, or making any changes to pack, collection, or individual card rewards as a result of the suspension. Please note that this card is currently only available as a Standard IRC. If we ultimately decide to ban Winona Joiner Forces, we will include any information on the changes to the player's collection at that time. If you are participating in a traditional historic or historic event using a deck that includes Winona Joiner Forces prior to today's maintenance, you will still be able to compete in the event with your current deck. Please note that your deck will be flagged as unavailable because of the suspension, however. This will not prevent you from Finishing a previously entered event, once you have finished the current event, you will no longer be able to submit decks that contain these cards. The Winota Joiner Forces suspension will immediately go into effect for all historical play quiz once today's maintenance is completed. This includes both traditional uh, historical ranked and historical ranked events. <clears throat> Moving on, I would like to talk about uh, some other bans that have occurred. As a result of a public outcry on Twitter and Reddit recently, concerning the racial implications of cards, released information about Watsi's hiring practices, and an epic mess step by Mark Rosewater concerning spoiling a card by playing a game of Hangman, which he quickly apologized for on Twitter during the ongoing racial turmoil in this country, Watsi has banned many problematic cards due to art, implication, or text on the cards in the following article, Depictions of Racism in Magic, published on June 10th, 2020. Link in the description. The article reads, Today we will be changing the multiverse ID and removing the gather card image for the card Invoke Prejudice, originally printed in 1994. The card is racist and made even worse by the multiverse ID. It was unfortunately codified with years ago. There is no place for racism in our game or anywhere else. 
but to that point it should never have been published or placed in the gatherer and for that we are sorry the events of the past week and the ongoing conversation of how we can better support people of color have caused us to examine ourselves our actions and our inactions we appreciate everyone helping us to recognize when we fall short we should have been better we can be better and we will be better to that end we will be removing a number of images in our database that are racist or culturally insensitive including invoke prejudice cleanse stone throwing devils paradish gypsies jihad imprison and crusade Replacing those card images will be the following statement. We have removed this card image from our database due to its racial depiction, text, or combination thereof. Racism in any form is unacceptable and has no place in our game nor anywhere else. Additionally, these cards will be banned in sanctioned tournament play. There is much more work to be done as we continue to make our games, community, and company more inclusive. Knowing that we work every day to be better and that we hear you, we look forward to sharing more of our plans with you as our game and organization evolves. Having read the article about these cards are being removed due to racial or racist implications, whilst I don't understand all of the choices that were made, that doesn't excuse mine or Watsi's ignorance, and I am happy to see that they are taking a positive step forward in addressing this issue, even if many in the community see this as pandering as far as the bans go there has been no articles on the oathbreaker site stating any changes in the format concerning these cards but it is safe to assume that they will follow suit in the future i advise that any player may want to take the initiative to have an honest discussion with their playgroup concerning these particular cards as a final note I have verified with many of my local stores that the Love Your LGS promo cards have now arrived in stores. The cards are Reliquary Tower and Mecha Godzilla Battle Fortress, which is an alternate art hangerback walker. It is up to your supported LGS to decide how they will distribute these promos, but the statement by Watsi was that a copy of Reliquary Tower is for any qualifying purchase and that the alternate art hangerback walker is for the purchase of a box of cards i would now like to take a moment here to talk about an lgs that i personally love this is not a paid promotion i just want to support my friends at mythic games mythic games is a gaming store for all ages located in littleton colorado they have a pleasant attentive amazing staff and they always help me with any request i have they stock hundreds of games and are willing to ship them directly to you. I have submitted entire deck lists to them online. I have done this via Facebook Messenger many times, but I know they will also do this via Twitter. They have then filled my order, and when they haven't had cards I wanted or the product I'm looking for, they have always taken the time to suggest suitable replacements, which is very helpful when I'm rushing to put together a deck the night I plan on playing it with friends. I will put all of their information in the description. Please... Reach out to them if you're looking for a local game store you can trust. Now that we have provided you with information and our opinion, give us your thoughts in the comments below. What products this year are you looking most forward to being spoiled? And how do you feel about these recent bans? We really do want to know. Please do try to keep it civil in the comments below. If you enjoy the video and want to support the channel, then please remember to like, share, and subscribe and turn on notifications so you can be one of the first to see our updated oath-breaking news stories. We do have merchandise. If you want to show your support, please see the link in the description. Please be sure to check out our Mother of Old Planeswalkers merchandise based on the Jaya Ballard deck tech we produced. If you want to support the channel directly, please consider giving at patreon.com slash signature spell bomb or paypal.me slash signature spell bomb. Again, a huge thank you to my contributors and my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. Thanks again, and I hope I don't see you in the headlines.